Good morning and welcome to Lillehammer 2021. It's day three of competition on the Alpine slopes at the World Para Snow Sports Championships. It's been a blustery morning, but we will soon be getting underway with the Super Combined, the Super G, followed by the Slalom. Six more gold medals up for grabs across the men's and women's events. Myself and Alan in the commentary box will be getting underway very shortly. Well, like I say, myself, you and Dunlop and Alan March in the commentary box. We're getting underway in around about four or five minutes' time. Again, it has been a blustery old mooring here in Lillehammer, but things have settled enough to let the competition get underway on time. Coming up first of all, we've got the vision impaired, followed by the standing and the sitting in the women's events. Alan, what's your observation so far across the entire competition? I think the guys and the girls have all mentioned that the slope has been slippy so far. We did have a light dusting of snow a couple of occasions yesterday, so those conditions will have changed. How much remains to be seen? The wind this morning, obviously, was a big concern. Safety first, always, always what they're looking for, not just the athletes themselves but, of course, the guys and girls behind the scenes are trying to set it up. There you see the snow still registering as hard out there on the slope. It's uh, only around about minus two in the air, so it isn't even that cold for a, for a skiing event. Uh, it isn't that cold here. The westerly wind has died off, as we said. It was much stronger around about 25, 30 minutes ago. You can see the gates still blowing a little. Yeah, I mean, 20 minutes ago, Alan, we were looking at these exact same pictures and it wasn't sort of constant wind. There was just very strong gusts and blowing the dust up. Um, like I said, there was, a, there was a smattering of snow late last night. It was just picking that off the floor. The snow is definitely still hard. But uh, let's have a look then. Vision impaired coming up first. We've got Britain's Millie Knight, followed by our teammate Menny Fitzpatrick, Linda Laban, Sarah Choi and the indomitable Henrietta Farkasova. She's had an incredible championship so far, winning gold in the downhill and the Super G. Then we'll have this followed by the standing. Big names in there. Mary Boucher goes out the gates first of all. It's a position they all want to be in first down the slopes. And then finally the sitting. Five runners in the sitting. Annalena Forster, she's had a great competition so far. And you will see, if you're new to the sport, the time factor, that is the speed at which the clock runs against, let's say, normal time. And then the men's in the super combined and the vision impaired. Big names there, Jacob Krakow, Miroslav Hlaraus. In fact, you've got 10 runners in the VI for the men's super combined. Again, it's a super G followed by the slalom later on this afternoon. This is the longest day of competition. VI always followed by the standing. Arthur Boucher, Thomas Field. Who are your big names in that one, Alan? Well, you have to fancy that uh, Arthur Boucher will have the bit between his teeth. He hasn't managed a goal just yet, but he has been in very good form. A couple of the other skiers already saying that he'll be ready today. This is He's going to attack this because he'll be already disappointed not to have got a goal uh, and indeed not even finishing in the last race. And four pages there, it's a big field in the standing. Is the key just to get to the slalom? Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, probably more so in the lesser events in terms of numbers. You know, obviously in the sitting event and the VI events for women, we don't have those uh, in numbers. So for, for those guys getting through the first run, really, really important. Uh, you know, in Camp Shore in this sitting event, uh, if you were watching yesterday, uh, oh, sorry, the day before yesterday, should I say, uh, you'll know just how quick he was. Three seconds plus on everybody else, which was frighteningly quick. So we're looking forward to seeing the battle between Camp Shore and Pedersen, of course. We have our first runners at the gate. It should be Great Britain's Millie Knight. Brett Wilde going with birthday bronze on her last outing. What can the British pair come up with this time around? Mum Suzanne, I'm sure, will be watching on. As she always is, very often from the course itself, but obviously in the last few years, travelling 
with elite athletes is fairly problematic. So far, no problems for Knight and Wild. We'll keep an eye on the weather at the moment. Again, we, we were talking a few moments ago about the fact that it was so windy. The fences were rattling outside of our window. They are perfectly stationary now, so the conditions couldn't be any better. Again, still slippy and slidey. You saw Knight just trying to stay in the right line. As I mentioned earlier, a double run competition, so it is imperative you make it down on the first. It is something that the 23-year-old, as he starts to enter the final section of the course, he'll come into view for us just outside our commentary window right now. And the latter part of the course isn't particularly tricky. It's all about finding the momentum and the speed to hit that line, and that's exactly what Millie Knight will do first out of the gate, 120.90. Arms aloft for Millie Knight. She's happy with that one. Mena Fitzpatrick. Change of guide again for Fitzpatrick. Katie Guest leading her down. They struggled on the training run before competition started. There was a Visibly something not right when they came through the line. They weren't happy with something. And, uh, the previous day's competition, she went with a different guide, so Katie Guest is back here. They're finding themselves a little way back as we enter the final two gates. And the 23-year-old Brit comes across the line. Gold medalist in the Super G of the last World Champs, a gold in the slalom in Pyeongchang. Can she keep that run going by picking up a gold here? At the moment, it's not going to be in this competition. Oh, now the guide having a problem, which often leads to the actual skier having a problem. Linda Lebon isn't too far on the course. She's going to make the gate, and again, the reason being is because you've got two runs, so you've got to make the first one. Pierre Hockley. Perhaps taking the wrong line himself a few moments ago, and they've managed to regroup, but it will have cost them all manner of time. And well, she's got a, two silver medals in this World Championships already. There are only five in the competition, so the reason for clambering back up the mountain and going round the gate was fairly obvious. And Kokule again. Slamming through one of the gay posts and well, arms in the air. We'll call that a relieved run, shall we? Sala <laughs> Choi, bronze medalist on the opening day in the downhill. Just 18 years of age. Guided by Kim Yusyong. Already going through the second intermediate. You notice the gap between the start of one runner and the finish of another is not that much. Huge distance between her and her guide here compared to other athletes. Yeah, they very often vary and differ between the, the two. It's however the comfortable the athlete is with their impairment. The, their range of vision may be very different to the one before and the one after. So you will see a variation in that indeed. So Choi coming through the line. And uh, well, there's no start here for Henrietta Farkasova. I've got nothing in my ears to tell me why that might be. So the lady that's won two golds already isn't out here this morning 
Interesting. So Millie Knight leads the way. So Linda LeBon climbing back through the gate makes even more sense. Absolutely. Great start for Millie Knight too. Um, where's Farkasova? My goodness, no information whatsoever. We will try and find out for you. And on to the standing class. Mary Boucher, one of the standout names here. Had a gold medal in the downhill. Had to settle for bronze, though, Alan, in the Super G. She mentioned on the first day of competition, there were some youngsters coming through. They did that in the following day's event. She did also say that bronze was the only medal missing from her collection, so talk about taking it lightly. Uh, Boshe will, will not have let that bother her in the slightest. It will only serve to inspire and push an already inspirational athlete as it is. So here comes Boshe. We'll see how much that bronze irked her by just how quick she comes down here on the third day of competition in the Alpine. 27 years of age now, won everything there is to win, and that is why the conversation is already turning to what happens after Beijing. Already one goal out of two. She would have had the hunger to get five, just as she did in 2019 at the World Championships, the world champ split between Selenovir and Kranska Gora. Boucher gets the chance to set the fastest time of the morning. So the gauntlet is thrown on 12.54 from Boucher. One of those challenges will be Frédéric Turgeon from Canada, already a second down at the first intermediate, 22-year-old from Quebec. Double bronze and a silver. But the last World Championship showed just, just how far she's come and at such a speed as well. Oh, she's got wide here, but... Managing to stay in and, no, sliding out. Something's not right for Fred Turgeon. And out of the competition, remember, a double run here in the Super Combined, and something clearly wasn't right here. She got all manner of Isla line coming into this gate. She would have been inside, but she chose to come out, and that would suggest that she's feeling something. Alana Ramsey, second of the Canadian contingent. I nearly said that properly. Canadian contingent, there we go. Factor time of 93.48. So, again, that clock at the bottom right hand of your screen will run fractionally slower than your average stopwatch. Now, can Ramsey control this turn? No. Another that's struggling just there, and Ramsey with a real yelp and a real battle to stay in line. So, already 1.91 back. That's 7.67. We saw the uh, the Belgian pairing of Gokule and Le Bon struggle in that very section in the early part of this race. We've seen Turgeon go out. Uh, Ramsey's a wide again and out. Misses the gate, and that is two from the end. Well, I made the mistake earlier of saying that the bottom section didn't look too tricky, but that left-hander has caught out Ramsey. A little bit too narrow. Hasn't been able to cut inside nearly enough. 
and slides out. She's fine, she's up, she's slid down towards the finish. But her day is done. When Mary Boucher crossed the finish line, she shrugged her shoulders as if to say, that was just OK. It could turn out to be a fantastic run. Yep, handling this first section. Through she comes, so six seconds back, but has managed to fight her way further than some. So only the second time registered. We had two Canadians, we've now got two Germans out on the course. That's a much better line from Rothfuss. But again, finding herself 0.89 down. I suppose the one we're looking for is Veron uh, Chikina later on in the standing, but at the moment, Rothfuss 2.62. And managing that last corner that caught out Ramsey. 3.63 will put her in second position with a run of 116.17. Second place. Yeah, Michaela. Now, can Michaela Gosselin do what her teammates haven't managed just yet? Let's get all the way to the end. 166 down. This is the section we've been keeping an eye on. And again, another struggle. to stay in the line, trying to stay in the groove and Gosselin again wide. They're taking some ambitious lines through the gates are the Canadians. Can Gosselin make it pay? And she will hit the line. Let's take a look at the time. It's going to put her in fourth position. 120.66. That's a fourth place. For the 20 year old. The Canadian is 8.12 behind the leader pushing. Petra Three and a half down at the first intermediate. Into this tricky right hander, and that could be the end. It is the end. Slovakian falls foul of a very familiar foe. Coming down next, Ami Hondo of Japan. Can she make it to the bottom is the big question. Half of them falling foul to the course so far. And Mary Boucher first out the gates her time looking even better as the competition continues. Bronze medalist in the downhill at the last. World Championships Honda, that big, big smile on her face will never be forgotten. Real shock to her that she was on podium. A world champ bronze. Can she follow it with a medal here? There's every chance because some of the big names have already come out and fallen away. There's still plenty of talent to come out of the gates. Hondo again, another one struggling with that right hander, but she's managed to get inside and stay in the uh, in the race, so 5.3 down. It's more a case of get to the bottom and worry about your time at the end at the moment. For all of these, it would seem. As you and was talking about earlier, Boucher's shrug of the shoulders may not mean so much now. Into this left-hander, she's found the right line this time. And Hondo will tuck in and see if she's found a little bit of speed and time back on the bottom section. She goes fourth, 119.76. I think the major relief for any of them at the moment is hitting that line. Johnson should be next. Ali Johnson is indeed out of the gates. 27-year-old from Chicago. Her first 
World Championships. Oh, she's all not going to make it back here, and hopefully Johnson's OK here. Well, she sits straight up, and that's always a, a decent sign, but once she'd lost the ski on her left side, she was really struggling with her right foot. And, uh, well, there's lots of movement there, which is always, always something you want to see straight off the accident. Uh, coincidentally, she didn't struggle with the turn that most have. She didn't get in line for the one just before. So coming off course was almost inevitable as she came round there. She was never going to make that right-hander. It's obviously she's hit something rather hard as soon as she left the lines. She's been thrown around in that fencing. And the great thing was to see her moving almost instantaneously. So uh, there she is in an upright. That's uh, great to see. These athletes know exactly the dangers that are in front of them when they leave the gate. And most of them will quite happily show you the scars and bumps and bruises of the sport they love, so uh, it's not without its pain, but equally, it is uh, as safe as it can be possibly be. Those nets doing exactly what they should. So we'll have a, a short delay whilst everything's put back together. We'll be back with you in a couple of moments. So, and then a four step. This is uh, Shana Brownlee, who came up with a, a silver yesterday, or the, the last day of action, should I say? I keep saying yesterday. I'm not used to having a day off. Don't give me a day off. Just let me work. Uh, it's Brownlee with a silver in the Super G. So, she'll be looking forward to getting back out there and seeing if she can continue the medal trail. Four left to go, Ellen, in the standing. The big name on there is Varvara Voronchikina. She's going out second from last. Her big title sort of contender, Marie Boucher, going out first. What's the major difference between those positions? And is it a massive advantage for Marie Boucher? Well, you want to be out there as, as early as you can before, you know, some of them will tell you before it's been carved up um, by everybody else. But uh, at the moment, in these conditions, you're seeing slightly different lines from most, so perhaps nothing in this instance. Um, one advantage to going later is you know a little bit more. And in fact, Veronchikina is at the gate here, which we should have had Ursula and Renu. And I'm just wondering if conditions might be a reason for a DNS. Uh, Ursula is very young. Uh, I do wonder if she's just thought, no. <laughs> It is, uh, it is rather quick out there and, and quite frightening, so uh, fair, fair play if that is the reason. She may well be injured, she may well be ill, uh, so we'll, uh, we'll not speculate, but uh, it is indeed, so we, we don't have to wait. Varvara Varunchikina is out on course. The fencing has been mended from the accident to Ali Johnson. Hopefully, hopefully she is as OK as she looked uh, on the images that we saw. Varunchikina... He's more than OK here in Lillehammer. A gold, a silver, and just 0.49 the difference so far. A factor time of 100%. Her clock runs as it should. Just the inability to use a ski pole in the left hand for the RPC athlete. And she hurtles down. Where will she be at the second intermediate? What's a fairly sideward slide? Perhaps trying to control her speed through this section. Mostly in her mind will be the fact that she has to get to the bottom to compete in this first run, but she's pulled it back to just 0.10. The battle between Bolshe 
and Ronchikina is brilliant at the moment and it is worth watching every single run, it would appear, to see how close these two are. Beijing is in for a treat. If these opening days of Alpine are anything to go by... Oh, she's inside again. Three quarters of a second and change. Veronica Kina punches the air in delight. We're so used to saying a certain name in women's standing. Getting used to saying Veronica Kina might be my homework. She's delighted. Well, it serves for tremendous watching, not only for the rest of these World Championships, but, wow, Beijing, you're in for a treat during the Winter Paralympic Games. This is Shane Vaspi of Israel. Lost the leg at the age of three in a motor accident. Fighting with the course here at a familiar gate that we've seen so many not get by. But, uh, Israeli athlete, yes, 15 seconds down. No, not down. She is fighting her way towards the line. She'll be into the final section in just a matter of gates. Here she is over the brow of the hill that we can see. There's one more tricky left-hander to come here. And she handles that well. The outriggers, instead of poles, and Vaspi comes through the line. She's going to slide to a halt, and there's a, an air of relief as she comes through. Big gulps of air needed for the newcomer. <laughs> she was so, so close to the line before falling, but uh, it all counts. She gets through and she's completed her debut World Championship run. And there's the smile I thought we might get eventually. And just by crossing the line, puts herself in seventh place too. There's your leaderboard. Voronchikina and Boucher again going head to head. 0.77. So now the shrug of the shoulders from Boucher kind of makes a little bit of sense. She felt there was a bit more speed in there and Voronchikina found it. She found something, for sure. Finally, on to the sitting. Annalena Forster had a great competition so far. She won gold a couple of days ago in the Super G. And that is exactly what we start with right now. She is in the gate. Five runners in the sitting. And there she goes. 86.79. The adjusted time. It is hard to look past and, uh, Lena Forster. It's uh, a competition that, or a category, should I say, that, that's gone through quite a lot of change in terms of names. When I first came in in 2017, there were far more women's sit skiers, Forster being the youngster back then. A few of the older names choosing to retire and, and leave the sport. And as, as that's happened, it is one of the areas that the APC would love more competitors in. So if you do fancy having a go in a sit ski, well, I'll give it a try. It could well end up a World Championships or a or Paralympic Games. Here, Forster, Stevens, Combologia, Van Bergen and Brownlee is... Uh, even the great Forster has a, a battle. But double gold in Pyeongchang, a singular gold in Krenska Gora. In the last World Championships, 
has been bettered with the double gold already here in Lillehammer. And, uh, Forster. No real difficulties, you have to say, as she tucks herself towards the line. And Eleanor Forster gets to the line. So 122.78. A little angst, it would appear, but a shake of the head compounds that. Laurie Stevens, one of those experienced sit skiers that hasn't made way. Double gold in Torino back in 2006 for Stevens, and it's rather ginger through the section because she will know that with just five being in this, any slip from any of them increases your chance of a medal, and it's a good game to play. Just two medalists in the Super G. Van Bergen and a debut medal for Combalusier in the downhill. Brownlee with the de debut silver in the Super G. And that is just what we were saying. Try and stay on course. And uh, Stevens is upright, but he's drifting out to the side. of Canada then. 4-0-5 down on four-step. A lot higher through that gate than most. I feel that the Canadian is concentrating on steady rather than speed. Understandable, to say the least. He's got one medal already. Two completed runs here on day three of Alpine competition. May well serve to give her a second, which really would have been beyond her wildest dreams. She's got a fight here to stay, and she will. Big, big rake of the snow through that uh, third to last gate. She is clear, she's clean, and she's down. Hubert Van Bergen, silver medalist in the downhill here. Her first Alpine medal since switching from wheelchair basketball. I'm sure her sights are set on a winter Paralympic medal because that really would complete the set. A London and Rio bronze medal. She's actually up here. We saw that Forster wasn't happy. Van Bergen has certainly improved since debuting in the Alpine world back in 2014. How much can she push? She was in good spirits the other day. I got a chance to chat with Several members, oh, no!
they start or? They start now. Yep. Wait, Berko. Yes, I am waiting. Uh, the physio for 22 is coming down. Okay, we need to wait and the uh, physio come down. Picasso's on the way. Uh, so just uh, please inform me when uh, the action is done. So we are just joining as we do have an interruption to the schedule at the moment. An injury, it would seem, for Barbara van Bergen, the fourth of the five sit skiers to leave the gate, slid out in the middle part of the course, got wrapped up in the fencing, which did its job and stopped them going any further. And we'll wait to see what the news is for Barbara van Bergen. And there she is. There is a there is some movement from the Dutch lady. She's uh, gone right through the fencing, so first job would have been to get her out of there. Medical staff on site as well. This is the, uh, one of the members of the Dutch team medical staff, I understand. Obviously with Para Sport, the medical teams within each team are just as vital as any coach. And they have to know the athletes, but they have to know their impairments and how to, to manage those on and off the course. Um, I think she's upright here, which is great news. Or at least they're lifting it from the netting, so... Trying to manoeuvre the six ski bucket seat at least. It's definitely come away from its uh, singular ski. I'm just trying to move her, and, and the fact that she's not been placed in, you know, neck brace or a board or anything like that would suggest that, I mean, she's even using her own arm, so this would suggest that uh, other than being extremely shook up and some super bumps, which... She's a tough cookie, is Barbara van Bergen, so she'll be used to that. I was just saying before, she was in really good spirits, and when I saw her at the bottom of the run the other day, the Dutch team were watching on as Jeroen Kampscher was having his medal presented to him. Jeffrey Stuck, Floris Meyer, to name a few, but we're all down there. Well, it does look as if that will only be a, a minor delay. As we take a look back at the top, Shona Brownlee has got a long wait. She's already had a long wait, but she's still got a little bit more to wait until the hill is clear. They won't let her run until everything is uh, done and dusted. There's a smile from Shona. And unsurprisingly as well, picking up a silver medal on your debut World Championships. Brilliant. And of the four before her, only two have finished, so she just needs to reach the bottom of the courses, which is easier said than done, but it's in a great position to pick up another medal at these championships. It will take a little bit of time just to put that netting back together. But what an incredible job that netting did. I think she hit the third row or so. Went in with some real pace, so such a relief at any time to see athletes pick themselves back up. Well, Brownlee was inspired by uh, an advert promoting a ski camp in Bulgaria while she was at uh, Headley Court Defence Medical Rehabilitation Centre in, uh, in Epsom in England. So she uh, went along to that camp and uh, inspired to take up the sport properly. And uh, she had never skied before my injury. She said, she said it was cliche, but it's true that skiing gives you freedom. She'd heard that from others, but uh, had never really experienced it. And she said, you know what, everyone's on the same mountain, um, whether or not they've been injured. So uh, a fantastic way of looking at it and a, a, a fortuitous way to get involved 
in the sport. You see uh, Van Bergen being lowered a little further down. I wonder if they're more having to assist because there's probably something broken within the uh, within the mono ski. We'll find that out in a second. In fact, no, they're not. They're going to put her on it. So there you go. They were just trying to get her to uh, terra firma, as they would say. And uh, she's so OK. She's obviously going to ski her own way down. So uh, there you go. That's uh, testament to, A, how safe it is out there on the sides. The, the, B, the net doing a fantastic job. But, but C, just, just how robust these athletes become. They know the sport, they know the perils and the pitfalls. And she is answering any questions as to how injured she might be by saying that she's okay to ski down on her, on her own. So that's, uh, that's fantastic to see. Again, if you're just joining us, expecting us to be in the men's VI or even probably by now the men's standing uh, competition, we have had the race interrupted. Barbara van Bergen with a spectacular exit. I'm sure we might see it. Now we know she's okay. We might see a replay of that a little bit later on. It really was quite a spectacular exit off the course. I mean, after seeing that in real time, there's no way you'd have thought I were going to see it right now, actually. Yeah, she, was, she was never going to get this right-hander. She, she'd missed it, and a bump sent her spiralling. And look at the net. It does exactly what it's meant to do. By the time she was falling towards the ground, she was caught up in it. And actually, she wouldn't have hit the ground that hard from the fall. So, so fair play to putting the nets there, to, 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 to line them up just as they would need. But just going back to the entrance into that turn... She was leaning to the left. Now, it's really hard. The bucket seat, you're on a singular ski. If you've shifted your body weight to the left or, or the grain of the, uh, of, the out of, the, of the snow itself is sending you to the left, the ability to throw your weight back across and twist to turn at that speed on that corner, as we've seen already, nigh on impossible. So, you know, this is, she, she's pretty much experienced. You know, Barbara, very, it, she's not a, it's not a debut. It's not, she's not a couple of years in. She's, she's very much experienced. Uh, and being able to twist your body and throw your body weight around, that would have been almost impossible at that moment. The issue was, once you're off the course, it's not groomed so well. So she would have hit something that was almost like a brick, you know, basically an ice brick on the side. It hasn't been groomed. It hasn't been, it hasn't been destroyed. And it's just flipped around. And at that point, especially on one ski, you're in trouble. Uh, I think we saw Bagayev spinning around on two skis uh, for one moment backwards and then he managed to spin himself back around again. You know, great if you're on two skis. Great if you're, you're, you're sighted athlete as well. But in a mono ski, the moment you get backwards, you're praying for, you're praying for, for something good to happen. And, and the nets clearly here have done their work. Well done to everybody setting out the course on the sides as well as setting out the actual gates themselves. Uh, Van Bergen is able to come down seemingly fine. It, it's just so good to see her coming down under her own steam. Um, you've seen the replay. It was um, we lo it looked horrific when she initially went into the to the netting in real time. To, to, to see this is just absolutely brilliant for her and the rest of the competition. Well, there'll, uh, there'll be a debrief, a little bit of a chat. First thing that was said was, "Are you all right?" And, uh, in a way, yes. In, a, in lots of other ways, I'm sure she'll say no. But uh, there you go. Uh, I'm sure the the guys in the Dutch team, part of the men's sitting, will be uh, will have taken note to that. There's the, uh, the stretcher. Not needed this time around. And all this time, Shona Brainley. Sat yeah. in the gate at well, the top. Well, it's part of the sport, and, and, and dealing with lots of different things is how it's all about learning. Here, she's having to learn how to control her body temperature. She's having to learn how to control her mind. She'll have been through the course a million times sat in that gate. She'll have absolutely just gone through every turn that she's recognised, and hopefully somebody's feeding back. You know, we heard uh, we heard. You know, and Cam Schiller talking about sometimes it's better to go afterwards because you can watch the live stream on your coach's phone or on the on an iPad or whatever, uh, uh, some sort of tablet device up at the top, and you start to think, right, well, they're struggling there, so I'm going to adapt that, or or good, good that's not the line I was going to take anyway. So so those guys have, have learned. Hopefully, the the Great Britain team have been talking to Shona and just sort of said, well, you see that bit there, don't do that. Um, which is exactly what she, well, she won't want. It's exactly like Veronica Keener in the standing. Went out last, it turned out to be, and um, took 
almost a full second out of Bichet, who went out first. I mean, is that preference? Does everybody sort of keep an eye on what's going on, or do you want to keep your mind absolutely closed and just, this is just my race? I think, uh, I think having spoken to, to the guys and the girls that, that take part in this, I think the majority do watch. I think I don't think there's any, I don't think there's any disadvantage to looking at it. They'll, they'll want to see it. You know, you can only learn from what goes in front of you, of course. So being able to watch it when it's being broadcast, certainly to, to this level, you know, the different camera angles, the replays, everything that's out there. You know, that, that drone shot, for, for instance, it's, it's wonderful to be able to look at that and see that. Um, they'll be able to get a, a sense of, of what's happening out on the course. So, yes, it's preferential to do that. Um, there's no major advantage. If you obviously, you know, we, the, there's, there's no hiding the fact that when a one athlete crosses the line and we see the next athlete in the start gate, that's not live because the gap between the start and the finish isn't when one finishes, one starts, it's, it's actually slightly less. So they would never see maybe the first four or five gates, for instance. If that was a problematic area, they wouldn't get a chance to see why perhaps it was a problematic area. So it's not, it's not the be-all and end-all uh, of being able to watch it up there. Now, Brownlee might be getting a little bit closer. Yeah, Van Bergen's literally just gone past our windows here across the finish line. She's now at the bottom of the slope, so... I think, I think the problem will be the netting. Some of it was taken away, so I'm imagining it was broken. Uh, I, would have, I would think that it's got to be replaced from somewhere. Um, so how long it takes them to get extra nets for that area could well be the key. Now, there's lots of coats going on, so that could suggest that they know there's a bit more of a wait to go, because that's uh, Jakob Krakow. In, in, in essence, he would be the third person to go in the next sequence. He's the second to go in the impaired category. Brownlee, obviously, we've seen at the gate. Uh, Agner still with the coats on, so it's not like they're absolutely ready to go. Well, like you said, it's part of the sport. They won't, be, they won't be not used to interruptions. Of course. Doesn't make it any easier for the 42-year-old. She's just sat there waiting. Um, and, and hopefully her mind is empty of thoughts about medals and, and such like. It is just a case of uh, getting through this. Uh, Bratislav Brosman in good spirits, it would seem. Hard to believe the difference in the weather from an hour ago. When we sat here an hour ago, we first made our way into the commentary box. We really had question marks on whether this would go ahead. Yeah, the, the wind was blowing, probably probably an hour and 20, I would say, more so. But, yes, yeah, certainly from 10 o'clock local time, it has changed dramatically. The clouds have disappeared altogether. The sun has come out beautifully, I have to say. If you're a, you're a photographer, you, you'd fancy being out there getting some, uh, some wonderful shots. Hopefully uh, someone's doing that in our absence. We can't get up there. Apparently we've got work to do um, here in the commentary box. And, uh, yeah, these guys will be... I mean, they, they go on the World Cup circuit together, they do the European Cup together. They're, they're all, you know, they're all pretty much a family, no matter what country they come from, they all chat to each other and they all know each other. So up at the top there, it is very much a community of athletes talking and discussing. That they'll, you know, they'll, they'll know that, that Barbara's had an accident, they'll now know that she's all but also made it to the bottom. So you know, th th there's lots of conversations. There is Shona Brownlee, still desperately itching to get out. One thing I've noticed on the podium down at the bottom this week, Alan, is just like you've just said, whether it's gold, silver or bronze, there are genuine congratulations between all of the athletes. They are happy for each other. Like any sport, um, these guys will have huge respect for each other. Um, you know, you saw Jesper Pedersen's reaction to Jeroen Kampschur's run yesterday or the other day in the men's sitting. It was almost a shrug of the shoulders is to say, what can I do? I, I can't do anything better that was, than that. That was better than me, he says. Yeah, yeah, you know, his own body language sort of suggested that, you know, that was amazing and what, what am I going to do about it? But, but it doesn't mean that he's going to switch off to that. It just means that he, he has that respect to say, yeah, fair play. And, and of course, you know, like any part of society, oh dear, uh, like any part of society, you're not going to get everybody liking everybody. That's just, that's, that's impossible. But, but what we have is enough people to go, do you know what? You've got an impairment, I've got an impairment. They're either similar or they're not even anything like, but fair play to you, like me, 
getting out of bed, getting out of my house, getting out and saying, I'm not going to allow my impairment to stop me from coming down this mountain this morning. And especially in the sitting, they need each other. And we've seen in this in this class, there's only five, so they need each other to have a competition just to go ahead. T today is recognised as Blue Monday. It's the, uh, apparently, it's the, it's the most depressing day of the calendar. Uh, the, the festive spirits have, uh, have all dwindled away. It's the first Monday after every, you know, pretty much everybody's back in their job, in their day job, in their office, whatever. Uh, and it's recognised as Blue Monday. I, I would implore you to take inspiration from what you're watching here today. These are a hundred or so athletes climbing out of bed this morning on a cold mountainside, putting on their boots, putting on the ski, putting on their skis, getting into their, their bucket seats, their, their mono skis, and, and having a go. Not, not because they have to, because they want to, because they want to demonstrate that regardless of the impairment that they have, either acquired or born with, do you know what? I'm going to go out and compete. And maybe, just maybe, I'll be a world champion or a world medalist or or I'll show to my nation that perhaps it isn't a skiing nation. Why not go and do this? We've had athletes from Israel this morning competing. We have athletes from Australia, not exactly well known for, for, for the snow there. You know, and they come and they compete. And we have people from all walks of life doing this event to demonstrate. So if you are somebody struggling, you know, on Blue Monday, I hope you can try and take an inspiration from this. If you if you're sat watching this with an impairment, please get involved. Try try and have a go. You you never know where your abilities lie. I, I can guarantee you, I did not leave school knowing I was about to be a commentator, and some 20 years later, then it happened. And, and you know, it's about having a go. It's about having the the inspiration, and maybe this is yours. So if you are struggling with, with Blue Monday today, we, we wish you all the best. Uh, mental health is a, is, a, is a very, very serious topic. We should all talk as much as we can do. So so hopefully you're, you're looking at this as an inspiration. Barbara Van Bergen up, down at the bottom of the mountain, seemingly OK, uh, OK enough to get down. I'm sure she'll need a little attention uh, at the bottom of the hill Anyway, uh, at the top of the hill, as you can see, soaked in sunshine. The rest of the athletes still to go. We've still got Shona Brownlee in the women's sitting to come. The fencing still being put back in. The men's competition hasn't started at all. We've got the men's VI to come start with. There are 10 athletes in that. There's well over 30 in the men's standing, so plenty to look forward to. 36 to be precise, and 17 taking part in the men's sitting. We have seen the numbers dwindle in all of the women's events, so this afternoon's session already starting to get shorter. We'll be back with you in a couple of minutes. We're not far away from returning to the action. Well, you might be able to see at the back of that shot to the right hand side the coat is off for uh, Shona Brownlee. So, uh, hopefully, that means that she's ready. It also means, hopefully, the course is ready. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt that Shona Brownlee is ready, inspired by already being a medalist here at these World Championships. I think all she wants to do is get out there and get on with it. And uh, that little beep sound is the timing system being ready. So uh, we are just about ready 
to get back underway. Shona Brownlee. Great Britain, if you're just joining us, big, big delay because of a, a tumble, a big, big tumble, to be fair, from Barbara Van Bergen, who was the penultimate athlete to go in the women's setting. Shona Brownlee is next. Barbara Van Bergen is seemingly OK. So we can now continue with competition. The netting has all been replaced and the drone continues to dazzle here in Lillehammer. Great shots being brought to you live by the local broadcasters. And it is with their thanks we are able to show what has been so far a brilliant production of world-class para skiing. The Alpine competition carries on. So Annalena Forster, 24-49 through this first intermediate. Not sure that Brownlee was ever thinking about matching that. What she wants to do is match her ski going over the red line at the bottom and clocking a time because only Forster and Combalazier have done it so far. And at the moment, the uh, Canadian and the Brit you see here in their debut world champs, if they can get two clean runs, will both have their second medals in their debut World Championships. I mean, it's a stunning start to the week. This is where Van Bergen had the struggle. Oh, and it's a struggle for Brownlee too. That right-hander, well, that isn't getting a Christmas card from anybody next year, is it? That right-hander is serious, serious trouble. That's exactly the same spot as Van Bergen, wasn't it? My yeah. goodness me, we've well, probably the fourth or fifth that we've seen go off here. Well, the difference here is that Brownlee is turning into it at least, but it's it's not turning in sharp enough. It's not being brave enough to get a little bit lower and try and carve a little bit more body weight, body position, leaning back or leaning forward. They're all parts of what you need to do. When you see the when you see the, the elite do it, you understand how hard it is to drive that ski in to get the turn. Brownlee sliding out again here. Um, there's almost a smile on the face, though, and, 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 and just getting to the bottom sometimes, just sometimes, is the hardest job. Forget the speed. Uh, and there we go. That brings an end to the sitting competition. So, Annalee Forster, eight in front, 14 seconds ahead of Katie Combalusia, going for a second medal in her first world championship. We also got bronze in the sitting in the downhill earlier on in the week. And at the moment, in line for a silver, if she could make it to the bottom of the run. Who, well, I say silver, who knows? Annalena Forster still has to make her way to the bottom two. But as the end of the women's competition for the moment. So here we go on to the men, starting of course with the vision impaired. Going out first is going to be the Austrian Johannes Agner, guided by Matteo Fleischmann. So after a 15 or so minute delay from the crash from Van Bergen, can Johannes Agner? Be the first man to make it to the bottom. There's been some really difficult turns we've seen. Two or so catching a few of our athletes out. But he started his run fairly well, so he would have been waiting at the top, just as was Shona Brownlee. The uh, town here drenched in sunlight now. It's a beautiful day. And it's a nice first run for the Austrian. This is the tough one. Makes it round, following the guy, beautiful. And shortly to come into view from our commentary position on the right-hand side. Guy just having a little look back. You can hear the yells from his guy. Very high, the guide, over that small jump. But keeping his man in tow. And here they come across the finish line. And the first time will be set at a 1.07.63. The first tick in the box down the hill on the giant slalom. So another good performance from the 16-year-old, and uh, he was denied gold earlier on in the competition. 
but uh, at the moment, De La Placet is uh, denying everybody anything, it would seem. The uh, Frenchman's got the bit between his teeth. Jakub Krako of Slovakia. Branislav Brosman is the guide for him. 31 years of age now, Krako. It's 1.47 down. Got the bronze in the downhill. So far here in Lillehammer. He's not short of a few goals in his career, but he hasn't picked one up since Pyeongchang. Didn't get one in the last World Championships. Got two silvers, both in the Super Combined and the Super G. So this will be the area he'll want to try and meddle in. He's found himself 2.81 down. That shows you just how good Johannes Eigner has gone here. He's denied the reigning silver medalist in this competition. Of course, it's all about the two runs. Miroslav Hareos next. Miroslav Hareos, guarded by Maros Hudik. Got a bronze medal in the Super G a couple of days ago. First medal of these championships. Just 0.15 down. And in fact, he's got into the green. He's 0.505 ahead of your current leader, Johannes Eigner. And carrying good speed. Shortly going to be coming. Just a couple of gates to go. Can he keep in green? And he can't. 1.22 behind Agnes. So a great uh -huh. middle section of that run. It's all good news for Johannes Egg now. We've uh, still got uh, Kozibov and Villapasse to come. Francev, Huang Simpson, Gulas and Jensen. Next one to go on the list is Huang Minyu. 2.64 down. Again, a uh, Korean athlete in both the women's and the men's events. It's good to see. Of course, many inspired by the last Paralympic Winter Games in Pyeongchang. At the moment, as they come into the final two gates, it's Job done, it would seem. It's going to be a way back. Ten seconds. So, uh, Huang Mingyu of Korea and his guide Han Shayun. Ten seconds off the pace. Here go the Simpsons. Yeah, Neil Simpson guided by his brother Andrew Simpson, just 19 years old. Looking to claim his first major championship medal and 0.54 through the first intermediate. My goodness me, this would be a turn up. He's competed already and 8.7 when he's growing that lead. Wow, this could be a big surprise. Fantastic first run from the brothers from Aberdeen. Started skiing at the age of four. A couple of years later, joined Gordon Skiers and now. In this World Championship, this would be a big surprise through the Super G. Can he hold on to this? 0.2A takes the lead, Neil Simpson, the young Briton. My goodness me, setting the time for the rest of the field. Only 10 in this field in the VI for the men. Highest in the Place still to come, but first of all, Valery Redbikov. Here we go then. Another of the Team RPC athletes. Uh, Evgeny Giroyev, the guide for Kozubov. 3.36 down already. Work to do, even for a top three, if that is the ambition. He's really slowed himself before even entering that tricky right-hander. So that clearly told us the mindset there of Valery Kozubov. He's 49 years of age. The great thing about para-sport is that age really is just a number. We do see a lot of athletes coming into this with acquired impairments. So regardless of their age, it's perhaps something they enjoy doing as an able-bodied athlete or just as an able-bodied you know, hobby. And they find that uh, with an acquired impairment, they actually they can compete at world level. And uh, this 49-year-old has been around a fair amount of time. He competed in Vancouver 
back in 2010. He's and, uh, off the pace, shall we say, here. Does have four gold medals to his name at World Championship level in his locker. And here's the man with two gold medals from this World Championship. Isar Delapaz wide, almost just making it round that gate there. Two gold medals. He has dominated the VI so far in this World Championship. Gold in the downhill and the vision impaired. He's point at 0.95. He's off his skis again, but still 0.95 ahead in green lights. A 32-year-old from Grenoble. How much will that have affected him, though? That was a big slide, not a big bump as well. It's a bumpy old course, but he's still on course. Of course, still got the slalom to come after this. What's his time going to be? He's grown his time to 1.07. What that could have been, my goodness. He certainly lost a bit of speed. A wry smile on his face. Just a little replay here. Look at the bumps. There's been a bit of snow last night, but it has not cooled the course whatsoever. It's still a very, very hard track. But he goes into the gold medal position for the time being. Well, Delaposse will be delighted, A, to have stayed upright, because there was a few hairy moments in that. B, he is in front, despite his difficulties. So, uh, Michal Golas from Poland. 17-year-old. Some uh, very young athletes in the men's VI category. Simpson, Eigner, now Golas. 6.52 the difference. Again, visibly fighting the course to make sure he comes to the end. Time he'll worry about afterwards. Another that's some 10 seconds back on the leader. That puts him in sixth position. So far, the long hair of Patrick Jensen takes to the course now. Now, you mentioned Australia, not famous, of course, for its ski slopes. What can the 25-year-old Patrick Jensen do? Located in Austria, took up the sport in 2013. He said, I needed a fast sport, something I'd never tried. Well, here we are in a world championship. So anything within five or so seconds is going to get him into the top five. He's already 7.77. So Patrick, a little bit of work to do. Again, just that right knee there, bouncing around, just showing how hard the course is. And certainly on these very certain corners, you get offline and you do put yourself in a little bit of trouble. But he's making his way a couple of gates to go. He will reach the bottom, so he's going to set a time. And that is uh, the first box ticks, 11.69, eighth position. But he will get to run the slalom a little bit later on this afternoon. Francev, second of the RPC athletes involved in this one. Herman Agaranovsky taking a look behind him, wanting to make sure that Ivan Francev, the 30 year old, made it through, and he did. Gold medalist, 2015 World Championships in the Super G. The slalom gold back in La Molina in 2013 as well. Went to the Paralympics. An eighth place in the giant slalom. Two fifth places in other events as well. And he hits the line and goes into sixth position in our final run of the men's VI category. So uh, not so many slips and spills in this one. Isan de la Place, 106.28, leading the way for the first run. Neil Simpson, he'll be absolutely delighted, he and his brother, to be currently in silver medal position, just 1.07 ahead of Josef or Johannes Eigner. Eight or nine completing the course before we move on now to the men's standing. This is a large class coming up shortly. into the men's standing competition then and uh, the normally outstanding Artur 
Brochet. Hasn't got himself a gold yet, and yet is the most important word in that sentence because it is something he will expect. It is certainly something that we're expecting. It's something perhaps his teammates will expect as well because at the moment, they're without a few goals they perhaps thought they were going to get here in Lillehammer. Good line so far, getting us close to some of the gates as we've seen anybody so far out on the course. A factor time of 92.32. So again, those new to the sport, that time means that the clock runs slightly slower based on that percentage. And he's handled that right-hander beautifully, by the way. Wasn't just glossing over it. And he is flying. Here's an early message. Arthur Balche has decided that today is the day he wants a gold. I think he's fed up of watching on from the sides. Into the line then, 106, 51, and he raises his fist right at the end there, does Arthur Balche, and that would indicate very often to the athletes themselves that tell us how good it was. Mitch Gawley then, disappointment in the last World Championships to get an injury. I don't know whether he was more disappointed with that or having to sit next to me and commentate afterwards. But Gawley flying down, 1.85 off pace currently, but that only goes to show you how quick Balche was, rather than any injustice to anyone else. Into the right hander, and again, Gawley handling it nicely as well. So the men's standing athletes, seemingly so far, OK with that right hander. But he's 3.67 down, bronze slalom winner in the last World Championships, a gold in the Super Combined in the 2017 World Championships. At the moment, he's got work to do if it's going to be any sort of medal, and he gets uh, rather high. He is a risk-taker, is Gawley. And through the line he comes then. 5.15 down. No wonder Boshe rocked his fist in the air. That's a, a look at disappointment from Mitch Gawley. Thomas Glocher up next. The Austrian, 28-year-old, one of our single-leg skiers, the use of the outriggers as opposed to the pole. 1.60. Outriggers similar to what you would see the sit skiers use. And there you saw Rocha purposefully getting over to the left-hand side, getting almost right out there to the blue die on the left so he could sweep in. But again, that line wouldn't be the quickest. And hence, he's 4.43 down. Just need to see each and every one of these skiers choosing a different way, a different style. 90.69, the factored time for Rocha, but he is going to be some six and a bit seconds back on Barche. That's the first three. Thomas Feel coming up next. <laughs> So Thomas Field, 25 years old, he's a, he's a New Year's Day baby is Thomas Field. No medals yet to his name in this World Championship. The man from Switzerland, or swimming out, or skiing out of Switzerland. And he's gone wide early on. 1.19 down through intermediate one. And he lost a fair bit of time on that wide slide. 3.23, work to do for the Swiss. Hero is uh, Roger Federer, Swiss tennis player. And Thomas Field needs to pick up a little bit of speed in this bottom section. Just comes into our view. Two gates from home. He will uh, 5.6. He'll be a bit disappointed with that one. Coming up next is the Briton James Whitley. Twenty-four years old. Started uh, skiing at the age of four in Courchevel, France. Uh, located in Austria. Here's that tough corner, and he's gone wide. Just keeps it inside, though. My goodness, great recovery. No poles for James Whitley. Lost a bit of time on that wide turn. 5.79. 
his ambition to compete at the 2022 Beijing Paralympic Games. And, uh, born without either hands. And what's he going to stop the clock out? Makes his way to the bottom, 7.69. Puts him into uh, fifth place, our fifth finisher of the course. I oh, know problems so far. Yes. Thomas Walsh yes. up next. Yes, a couple of frustrating runs so far. That's Tommy Walsh. And from Colorado. Just 0.91 the difference in the early stages. And he is driving into the turns, it would seem. 46.71. He's 186 down. But that would put him in second because the closest to Balsha at the moment is some five seconds. So uh, all Walsh needs to do is stay in line. He takes to the air. He's attacking it. We'll give him that. He's got this right-hander and then straight down. He's going to be outside, but how much? Just three seconds. Thomas Walsh goes into second position. Gets a round of applause from the smiling Balsha. But he will know that there's still plenty of big names still to come. Uh, Robin Kush of the Swiss. Last World Championship, not what he would have hoped for. Best with a fourth place position. Looking to medal at this year's championship. And 0.82 is enough to get him into a fairly good spot on this first run. And two seconds, this continues to be a nice run here. 3.14 over Arthur Barchet's time is currently held by Tommy Walsh. That's a silver medal position. So anything under plus three seconds, why? That's going to lose him a little bit of time. Just about holds on. No, he doesn't. Can he keep this going, in fact? He's made it through the gate. He will continue, but he's going to have lost six or seven seconds. Oh, a few gates from home. Yep, yeah, 8.4 over Borchet's time. And he'll be gutted with that. Really disappointed. Ah, uh, sorry if you heard any <laughs> expletives. We're going to move on to Santelli Kiveri. Kiveri now from Finland. Robin Kusch there frustrated, as you can imagine. 1.53 down here, Kiveri, in the opening section. 21-year-old. Missed out on the... Last world champs. He was uh, going through a spell of randomly fainting and uh, going under some medical examinations to figure out why on earth that would be. He did manage to make it onto the World Cup circuit later on in the season, but he was frustrated at missing the world champs. Fourth in the slalom in Pyeongchang. He really is capable of decent times. Goes into fourth after that one. Federico. Pelizzari out next. Just 21. Can he come up with a time to put him in contention during the second run? The Super G at the moment. Giving out its problems and Marche sitting pretty with over three seconds in terms of a lead from Thomas Walsh and running out of Expected names that could put pressure on. Into the bottom section then. Nice and tight on that gate. And he's going to go over the line in 109.49. Good finish from the Italian. And he's put himself in second position. I mean, that looked quick. He was carrying speed. Just looked out to our right up the hill here. Carrying speed through the final couple of turns. David Bendotti. Twenty-seven-year-old Italian with the outriggers, and there's a couple of really testy turns on this course. We're finding now we know exactly where we are. 1.81 down through intermediate one. Began para alpine skiing in 2013 in Passo della Persalona. Now resides in Austria. His idol 
is English footballer David Beckham. Why not? Why not indeed? <laughs> 5.86 through intermediate two. That would be enough to put him in uh, fifth or sixth position. It's very hard to see right now how anybody can catch Arthur Beauchet. A three-second lead is the closest anybody's come. Ooh, Just a great balance to hold on through the second from final gate. 8.75 puts him in the top ten. Yeah, I got a bit hairy at the end there for uh, Bendotti, who's uh, clearly felt it as he hits the deck. Nico Priancic. You get used to saying that. Nico Priancic from Austria. 1.43 down. Okay, another of the skiers with just the use of the pole in the right hand. Uh, left hand, should I say. But a factor time of 100%, so it uh, doesn't contribute to a slower clock. Not necessarily contributing to a slower time. Here comes Piantic. He's not going to be far outside the top five. In fact, he's inside fourth, 3.84. He slots in behind Thomas Walsh. It's going to be interesting for the other medals at the moment. Nobody managing to get too near after Balsche. Martin Frenze of Slovakia up next. Much easier name to say. I'll take this one, Alan. OK. So Martin Frenze, 37-year-old from Slovakia. Began, he's been around a long time, began para skiing in 1995, introduced to the sport by his parents. As you can see, no, no uh, ski poles. Just shy of two seconds through the first time clock. And he's just, oh, he took a little bit too much speed into that right turn. He's held on nicely. Also enjoys para taekwondo, painting and music. Plenty of hobbies for the Slovakian. And where can he set a time? Just wait for him to come into view to our right hand side. Here he comes. A couple of turns to come. His ambition is to win a medal at a Paralympic Winter Games. Well, he's going to be going into run two here at a World Championship. Currently in 12th position. He uh, raises an arm, fairly happy with that one. Satisfied to reach the bottom. Now, Leander Kress. The German is our 13th competitor in the men's standing. Oh, and he's lost a bit of slide, and he's going to come back in. Makes it round the gate. That's one of the two. And it's really, really testing our competitors today. And uh, lost a lot of speed and time, unfortunately. 7.74. And a much smoother final third of this run. Taking a high line into the third from last gate. He's having a rough ride, the German. But he will make it through the finish line. 11.96 down. Spencer Wood at the top, getting ready. Get it He's bib number 64. Very likeable Canadian. And in fact, happy birthday, Spencer Wood. If I remember rightly, the 17th of the month. He turns 25 today. Better way to spend your birthday than having to get out of bed super early and throw yourself down a snowy hill. But he loves doing it. He's uh, one of those characters within the US team. A vague recollection of him having his head shaved after losing a bet with Thomas Walsh in Croatia for some random reason. Can't remember what it was for. Through the line he comes. 6.08. He's inside the top ten. The Americans, you very often hear them cheering through the microphones of the cameras because they're often waiting for each other at the bottom and offering a little bit of support so Spencer Wood gets through unscathed. Naku Misawa of Japan then next up another of the single leg skiers as part of this competition bib 65 for Misawa 34 years old now imagine his, uh, his wife and his son Watching on. 
an office worker and he's not on the slopes. Yet to, uh, yet to find a medal at the Paralympics level. He has a bronze at World Championship level, but that goes all the way back to 2009 over in South Korea. Hasn't managed to emulate that ever since. It's the line here in 7.68. The difference, he uh, seems OK with that. one fourteen. the time. Number 66, Jeffrey Stutt of the Netherlands. Got a couple of bronze medals to his name in World Championships. Goes right back to 2017, though. Winning bronze in the downhill and the Super G. So has experience of being on the podium. International debut back in 2012. So won the circuit for nearly a decade. Oh my goodness, wouldn't he love to upgrade to a silver or a gold, plus 5.77. We were talking to him the other day and he was just so frustrated. He said, I'm finding speed in practice. I get out there and I just can't do it. And, and that is a mental thing. It's a mental thing as well as it is a physical thing. So that, and that's in any sport, whether it be para sport or airborne sport. Uh, 8.28, the difference here for Jeffrey Stood. But yeah, he was, uh, I was talking to him the other day, very frustrated. He can't seem to find, and there you see that frustration, can't seem to find the speed that he gets in training and in practice and away from competition. He gets to competition, he just can't quite match it up. John Theo Callahan here next. Australian, already two and a bit down at the first intermediate. Now Shay's time starting to look more and more and more impressive as Callahan goes down inside a gate, but whether he'll want to is a different question altogether. And the answer to that is no. Big slide out from Callahan. Well, I think, if I remember right, that's our first. DNF. I think you're absolutely right, yeah. Andy Hallahay in the box. Then the number 26. Actually, hang on a sec, he's gone straight down. Didn't see a single turn there, so he looks OK, which is great. If a little frustrated. Here's a replay then. So, yeah, just falling to his right-hand side. And then taking a, uh, a fairly long trip. He would have seen the net coming too. And the disappointment heads into the snow. Been skiing since the age of seven has had a hate. It's a game of Aspen, Colorado. Seems OK here. It's more a case that uh, he's trapped in the netting uh, and his other ski is, uh, is AWOL. So uh, here comes the cavalry. I'm sure once he's uh, reunited, he's just trying to get that other ski off, actually, isn't he? He's, uh, Give him a little bit more movement. But, uh, I mean, that's a good effort running up that slope <laughs> in, those, in those boots. <laughs> oh, they get used to it. The coaching team and the help comes from all of the teams. They all help each other. Now, at the moment, Boche's time looks fantastic. Almost three seconds ahead of Federico Palatelari. But in about four or five skiers' time, Tia Jmer. Well, Gmer, you pronounce it for me? Gmer. Gmer. There you go. And uh, Alexei Bugayev still to come. Yeah, could be some could be some surprises here. Um, you know, often these guys are, are listed by the points that they have in competition on the World Cup circuit uh, and their standing. So it's often based on that. So sometimes if you have some skiers who haven't taken part in the World Cups, where, for instance, the Super Combined has, has happened. You're, you're not necessarily going to see them higher up the list, etc., etc. But uh, Lindstrom is very much capable of speed. Uh, he's had success on the World Cup circuit before. Theo Gimmer is uh, he's, he's often brilliant. Bugayev sometimes flatters to deceive, but he's also capable of a decent amount of speed. And then, uh, Manuel Bourdanx uh, of France, somebody who I really like watching. He is. Uh, seemingly improves time after time, allows perhaps his frustrations to get the better of him. But it uh, could be interesting to see him, a man that survived a tiger shark attack, is uh, Manuel Bourdain, so it's a decent effort. 
Now, am I missing him here? But no Marcus Salk. No, Marcus Salk is not in it. He's, he's not uh, he's not having a go at the uh, at the combined. I think uh, he'll turn his attention to slalom and, and stick with it. Um, interesting, because obviously having won both the downhill um, and the uh, and the Super G. But equally, again, we, we talk about athletes. I, I don't know the official reason here, so so I, I'm not going to speak out of it. But equally athletes, uh, it could well be that health-wise, you know, dependent on their impairment. You know, we have a lot of athletes here with hemiplegia. Uh, you know, it's, it's not necessarily a visual impairment that people can see, as in an impairment that you can look at someone and go, oh, you know, you have one leg or you have one arm or you have a, a missing hand, etc. You know, a lot of the a lot of the hidden impairments are more difficult to, to spot. So, uh, Michael Salka, that may well be just that he's, uh, he's not feeling it this morning. He's had two very, very good days, after all. This is Alexander Alyabayev, 1.88 down on Barche so far. Does look as if uh, Andrew Harahe was fine. After his early exit, here comes the right hander. I wouldn't say it was comfortable, but it wasn't the worst line we've seen through there. He's still four seconds back. Top ten would need to be around about seven and so, so he's uh, a little bit of room for a top ten finish, but he's still some way off the line here, so can't see that being the case. We'll find that now. Hitting the line in. Yep, yeah, seventh, good. 5.43 in the end. He didn't lose too much on that bottom section at all. And that means that uh, Alexander Alyabayev has a successful run in the bag. Here comes Connor Hogan. Connor Hogan, 24-year-old from the United States. I'm sure his partner Ashley is watching. Back in Foxborough, Massachusetts. But cerebral palsy athletes. His, uh, parents love to sport Connor Hogan. It's uh, natural, of course, that he took it up. Supports the New England Patriots. 1.58 seconds down. He's gone a little bit wide, won't catch this one, unfortunately. And that'll be the end of the show for Hogan. We'll see him later on in the championships. We will move on to Marcus Nilsson Grasto. Of, uh, a couple of local skiers. Jesper Pedersen obviously carries the torch in terms of being the, uh, the lead name in local para skiers. Three point one nine down again. Another athlete that, uh, due to his impairment, doesn't have the use of his ski poles. Only twenty from Oslo. And he gets uh, inside 12 seconds, losing another three from the second to the end. Would mean he was very slow in this bottom section. And towards the line he comes then. Took part of the last World Champs. It's a, a locals round of applause and a reception. Aaron Lindstrom in the gate, 21 year old Swede. His uh, greatest achievement so far in para alpine skiing, seventh in the giant slalom in 2017. International debut in 2014. So he's done enough and seen enough to know what he has to do. And that's a high, high jump over the bank. One of the highest we've seen. He's held on, though. And he's carried the speed through the finish line, too. This will be good. Fourth position for Lindstrom. 3.34 behind. Look at that. That's one of the biggest arms swinging. Bit of a windmill. 
So he carried it through. Great time. I did say earlier, Lindstrom is very much capable of some fast times. He, uh, some of those World Cup performances hasn't carried them into a world stage yet. He's still, still very young. Olya Bayev, 32 years of age. Another that is very capable, Silva. The slalom at the 2015 World Champs. He's only 1.46 down here, so a top three in mind for Alibayev. I know Jumur. Uh, no, that does mean that Theo Jumur has not come out, so there you go. Uh, another that uh, has got a DNS. In fact, uh, as he whistles through, it's 183, so he's gone into second place. He uh, usurps Pelizzari and Walsh. He pushes Lindstrom down into fifth. And that is by far the best outside of Barche we've seen because we were starting to think it was a phenomenal time. It's been closed a little. And I did say, again, those that perhaps haven't been on the, the circuit would offer up a time a little closer. And we are indeed correct. So uh, Manuel Bordanx. Single leg amputee. Mentioned a little bit earlier is a uh, result of a, a tiger shark. And uh, here is Bordanks to compete once again. Remember seeing him in uh, now where were we? La Molina in Spain, and he uh, he had a problem with his. Uh, it's prosthetic, and he actually came away and uh, ended up running down the course with just the boot and the uh, prosthetic on it. So there you go. So, 1.46 through the gate. Can he gain a little more? Can he get close to the time that uh, Bugayev has just set? France would love a 1-2. Maybe Bordanx can do that. They've got to Jordan Roussin still to come as well. 2.48 here for Bordanx. A little bit out of shape a few moments ago, but... Uh... Oh, wow. Well, he's still going. Just three gates from the end. That... That's proved tricky with some, and it's inside the top 10. It's 3.89. He might have been a little bit quicker, if not for that issue. <laughs> He's uh, shaved his beard off this morning. Maybe that's what it is. Bounces down. Well, bounce back ability was a phrase that was used quite a few years ago in football. Oh, well, but thanks, clearly has bounce back ability as well. He's uh, hit the shoulder, bounce back up. There you go, he's, he's shaved his face. That was what was good. I was trying to think what was wrong. What was different? He's had a bit of a shave, but there you go. He's uh, bounced off and he's seeing the funny side with his teammates. There's Marie Boucher and Arthur Boucher. And uh, <laughs> chatting away in front of the camera there. But, uh, well, he's got to the line. He's got himself a time. Got a slight delay here, but not uh, overly sure why. I did hear some chat that there might be a bit of a brief pause. Uh, Bordanx in seventh, and above him is Nico Priancic, uh, Lindstrom in fifth, Thomas Walsh in fourth place, Federico Pelizzari in third, Bugayev in second. But Arthur Barche, from the very beginning, sits in first position. Uh, Bib 76 belongs to Jesse Keefe of the United States of America. He's just being held away from the gate just briefly, although that's now being pushed across in front of him. So we will be getting back to the action. Not sure what that delay was. Uh, nothing said to us. So Jesse Keith, another of the young guns, just 17 years old, resides in Sun Valley, Idaho. Here we go, Jesse, four ten. Began skiing at the age of two. Uh, his mother apparently wanted him to learn to ski as soon as he could walk. So, uh, no time like the present day. Eh? And uh, representing Sun Valley Ski Education Foundation and the National Ability Center for the USA. He's uh, born without an ankle bone in his right leg, was Jesse Keefe. And uh, amputated when he was around about 
11 months old. Three seconds down through the first time in gate. As that clo coach Gladys Veit will be watching on closely. And again, it's that turn. Oh, he's going to make it just back inside. It's proving difficult for so many of the skiers today in every single class. Certainly if you get airtime, if you, if you leave the ground, it is more tricky at that point because you know you've got to get back inside somehow. So difficult to recover, but Jesse Keefe did. And it high again, he's fairly high, but much better controlled. So he's going to make it to the uh, through the finish line. Going to be around about plus 12 seconds possibly. 11.39 for the very young American. And he will be competing in the second on the slalom. Just a tap of the pole, a bit of frustration, shake of the head. He looks to the ground. Now Oscar Burnham of France. 22 years old. Prior to his uh, impairment, planning on being a high mountain guide or part of the mountain rescue team. Paralympic Games are his major goal again. High on that one, but holds on. Plus 4.77. That's going to be a fairly good enough time to get him into the top 10, possibly. Just third side, lost a bit of time on the last few corners. 13th place for the Frenchman. His uh, teammate, Jordan Brossan, starts to make his way down the Lillehammer slopes. And that's a good first section time, 1.32. Brossan, again, just 28 years old. With a very early starter to the sport at two years old. Looking to win his first ever major medal. No stranger to world championships. This is his third world championship. He's carrying a good bit of speed here. He's not going to be too far away, you know, if he can hold up this up. 3.836 place. He'll be delighted with that. Best finish in a world championship is eighth position. I'll tell you what's good for France here. Bordanx in eighth, Brossan in sixth, Bosset in, uh, in first. It's uh, Andrzej Szczesny from uh, Poland. 1.52 down the single leg skier at the moment. 39 year old. It's uh, a while since he competed. On the big international circuit, it was uh, part of the 2015 Polish version of the reality show Splash. And he splashed out here. Roger Pri Davi of Andorra up next. Another athlete looking to win their first major medal. As a hemiplegia as a result of a skiing accident when he was 14 in Switzerland. Paralysis on the right side of his body. He's a studied, he's a clever chap, studied for a postgraduate degree in law in Andorra. And he's had a good first section here, 1.04. Slower in the middle section, yet yeah, lost a couple. Three and a half back. He was flag bearer for Andorra at the opening ceremony of the 2018 or Winter Paralympic Games in Pyeongchang. So no stranger to the big occasions. But he'd certainly like to be closing in on those medal positions. And he's in the top ten. With only a few 
races to come. So puts him in good stead for the slalom later on this afternoon. Next up, Gahuta Kueke. Japanese skier. Already over two and a half seconds down in that first section, the 39-year-old. He had a bit of a break from winter sport. Trying to qualify for the home summer games. And paracycling didn't make the team. Disappointed not to be able to represent his nation in a home game. So he's back on the skis. I imagine he'll be in Beijing. So at the age of 39, whether he'll get the chance to compete at a home winter or summer games now would be rather questionable. Hitting the line here in a time of 1.30.07. So he's 6.56 seconds down. Is Koike. Kohei Takahashi is next. Two Japanese athletes back to back. And here comes Takahashi. As he starts his run. Can he get uh, a little bit more speed out of this course than Koike? 21 years of age, very much at the other end of the spectrum in terms of his career. Skis for the Nippon Sports Science University team. He's lost a fair amount of time here. He's gone from 1.82 down to being 7.17 down, so found a decent line in the early stages. Has clearly come across some problems since then. And he's already outside of Balshay's time with four gates to go. Second World Championships, a best finish at a World Champs of 17th. Done that twice in the 2019 competition. Got some work to do. And finally, Adam Hall. Oh, no, three to go. Always turn the page. Always turn the Always page. 34-year-old Adam Hall, New Zealander. Um, now, this guy's been on the circuit a long, long time. Um, actually won gold in the men's slalom in Torino in 2006. So he's seen and been and done it all. But he's been beset by injuries throughout his career. Did win another gold in 2017 World Championships. So uh, been around a long time and he's been on the top step of the podium, but not for a little while. He'll be desperate to regain that sort of form here in Lillehammer, but he's 6.52 Dane through the second intermediate. His philosophy is dream it, live it, love it. And he's going to cross the finish line, 23rd position. 29, 15, 29, got three to go in the men's standing. Alexei Mukashin leaves the start gate. Representing team RPC. 23 years old. Resides in Yelizovo. Again, skiing at the age of five. And he's already through the gate. Look at this, 5.34, 11th place. Fairly satisfied with that young. Never been inside the top ten in a major competition. So he started the right way here. Tyler Carter, the American. 27 years old, from, uh, Colorado Springs. Competed at the 2014 Paralympic Winter Games in Sochi. Yet to medal at a major competition. Carter 989 behind at the uh, split number two. Inspired to pursue para-alpine skiing seriously after attending the uh, 2010 Winter Games in Vancouver. And uh, a decade later, here in the World Championships in Norway. 
So you're going to set the clock at 29th position plus 14 seconds. But he's done what a lot haven't so far today. He's found himself at the bottom of the slope. And now, finally, is Arvid Skogland, the Swede. already out, unfortunately, the 18-year-old. So maybe a little replay of uh, just what happened there. And there we have the, uh, I'm going to call him the Lily, Lily Hatter Man. Not sure if he's got an official name, but there's your results. Arthur Bauchet, first out the gate and still on top after 40 or so skiers. A 1.83 second lead over Alexei Bugaev of Team RPC. And Italy's Federico Pilarazzi rounding out your current gold, silver and bronze positions. Now then, many people will be tuning in to watch the men's sitting competition because it's been frantic yet fantastic in the opening two competitions. It's one all if we're going to do it as a competition, but don't discount plenty of the others in this field because there's some real talent. But Jeroen Kampstrui went first in the downhill and he said that he preferred going later because it gave him a chance to see what the course was doing. Well, he goes first again in the super combined competition. I had a, a brief exchange of messages with him yesterday as I did with Jesper Pedersen the day before, just chatting about their runs and both with the same sort of acknowledgement that the course is tricky and it's too tricky today. It's too tricky for Jeroen Kampstruhr, which doesn't exactly spell goodness for the rest and Jeroen is desperately, without the use of the ski, trying to bring himself to a halt. He'll be digging his hands in, he's going to end up in the nets eventually, he knew that was coming but, well, He's took a long time. That would have took the wind right out of Jeroen Kampstruhr. The heart will have been racing there, not necessarily from the course, but the moment he lost that ski, he lost uh, an ability to try and bring himself to a comfortable halt, which meant that he had to slide a long, long way down the course. Here you see, and it is that right-hander. He leaves, he leaves the surface, and it's just the bounce that does him. He was almost being able to rescue his body weight back to the right-hand side, but the second bump dislodged the ski, and you just see here it's all of a case of hang on. He almost comes to a stop here, and then there's another drop, and he's took one look at it, and again, just try to spin his body round to try and help himself slow. So the, uh, the ski is retrieved, but you just see how far away and he is from it. So the, uh, the court marshal will have to come a long way down and give him some assistance. At the moment, one of the coaches there just trying to help him out. So from the net, yeah. Disappointment not just for him, but for the competition. This was becoming Kampshire versus Pedersen. Um, so the spectators, of course, the Norwegian home spectators, um, it's, it's great news for Jesper Pedersen, really, but for the competition... Well, for the rest as well, do not discount some of the names on this list. Absolutely, we've seen improvements from Rene de Silvestro over the last few years. You've got uh, Andrew Kirker is on this start list as well. De Langen and Meyer, the two Dutch lads outside of Jesper uh, Jero and Kampstruhr. They'll be looking forward to having a go at this as well, and he will be licking his lips almost here at the prospect now, but what I don't think Jesper Pedersen is capable of doing, he's taking his foot off the gas. He is not a sort of sit back and see what happens kind of guy. He'll attack the course as much as he was going to, whether Kampstruhr had gone through the line or not. Jeroen will be disappointed. As I say, he'll probably have a few bumps and bruises as well as uh, as well as his teammate Barbara Van Berger. Those two can... Uh, can chat about the course merrily this afternoon because they won't be back out 
to do it again. But uh, I did say right at the beginning that it's, uh, these sort of conditions, the harder it is, the, the, the slippier and the quicker it is. It's the sit skiers that, uh, that take the brunt of that. It's very unforgiving on them. And if the world's best, arguably the world's best, is having a problem, then the rest of the field will know about it. But yeah, as I say, Pedersen, Kirka, Di Silvestro, to name but a few, will fancy it. Igor Sikorsky is capable of quick runs as well. And uh, I guess for Pedersen, goes flying through our window or past our window. He didn't come through the window. That would have been uh, disastrous. But he's gone past the window here in the commentary box. And now it's uh, sit and wait for Jesper Pedersen, the, uh, the man who took the downhill title on day one. Had to settle with a shrug of the shoulders, albeit, for Silver on day two. And again, we see the locals just waiting to see what happens and here's a here's a, a little nugget though but obviously if Pedersen were to slide out or struggle it really does open up the field for somebody else the uh, the medals in Pyeongchang went to Camp Shur the medals in the last world champs went to Camp Shur and Pedersen was second and third respectively in those events so if somebody else wants the super combined title, it's up for grabs because the reigning champion is gone. Pedersen in the gate. Factor time of 84.88. 21 years of age. Got his first ever world title here this week already. And he had a second. One of the major obstacles in terms of opposition has gone. The other main obstacle, of course, are these gates and how he navigates them into the drop. Here we go. Pedersen into the right-hander here. Early stages, all good. The big right-hand test yet to come. We lost Camp Sir. We lost countless others in that part as well. So far, so good for the Super Combined silver medal winner from the last World Championships, the Super Combined bronze medal winner from the last Paralympic Games, and he is through the problematic right hand. There's still a few more difficult gates to come through there's one not far from the finish he has to navigate as well but at the moment Kampsler is surpassed Pedersen looking to find the time for the rest to be in the opening run it's uh, a time of 1.10.12 for Jesper Pedersen you might have heard him shout yes as he got through the line 50% of the job is done now then, what do the rest have in their locker? Well, first to try and match Pedersen is Sang Min Han, 42-year-old Korean. Took up the sport in 1997. 2.66, and that's how wide he's going to keep on going. He's going to, in fact, slow his speed for that treacherous right-hander. I think he'd actually tried to slow himself down just before the drop, and I think he'd actually got caught up a little. So, I mean, it kind of worked, in a sense. <laughs> it did kind of work, yeah. Rather in than out. So he does lose a bit of speed for the rest of the run, but it keeps him in the competition. Fairly good field, 17 competitors in this sitting event. And it's that little jump that's also clutching a few acts. A bumpy old ride down there on a sit ski. And he's gone wide, can he make it back in? He can do, my goodness, second gate from home. And he goes over the finish line, 9.4. You've seen the odd person uh, have a problem with that uh, penultimate gate, not so many, but uh, Han sang -Min just uh, settles himself at the side. Now, the only Di Silvestre on the list, no Kurt Oatway, he injured already here in this tournament, and he's entered, but he won't be here. In this one, uh, 0.29, I did tell you, he's never improving his reigning Di Silvestro. 
been really uh, inspired by his performances over the last few years. He's uh, somebody that very much is improving year on year. 25 years of age. Not been competing all that long. Did do the 2017 World Champs, and he's 0.43 behind in the mix, shall we say. Good time from René Di Silvestro. Murat Peli is scheduled to go next. So it is the 39-year-old Peli. And his last World Championships in uh, Kranskagora. His best ever positions. In fact, no, he's down and out. And he's on for a big slide here. Trying to hold on. Just going to... Uh, Avoid the netting just about. Disappointment then for the 39-year-old. Just about to say he's at a sixth position in Kranskogora in the uh, Super Combined. But it is an early exit for the Swiss. And the, uh, the American... Andrew Kirker. Andrew Kirker. I think he started prematurely. Maybe... Maybe news didn't get back about the um, trouble that Pali got into. Haven't seen that before. So he's got to make his way back up to the start. Well, we'll see what happens here. I can't get on the T-bar. Yeah, I can hear on the radios in the background. He has to go back up. So there you go. He, uh, he's going to need some assistance to, to do that. So uh, well, Murapelli is definitely out. Kirker is just out of the gate, but needs to go back into it. So, uh, jacket, slight delay. Uh, somebody needs to fetch a piece of equipment for Andrew Kirker to be almost dragged up to the top. He's gone too far down to get back up there. Also, he doesn't want to exert too much energy doing so. So, he'll need a assistance to get up there. Do you see that very often? Uh, yeah, it's not as rare. You don't necessarily see it. An almighty, I have seen it, uh, and it does happen. Um, because there is such a short gap between the start of one and the finish of another, Kirk making his way up a little here. Might be keen to do it this way. So, uh, uses an almighty amount of upper body strength. What they will do is probably let him run last, because um, he'll want a bit of time to, to gather himself and just to rest up a little, I would imagine. Um, next should be Floris Mayer, and that is who is sat in the gate. So what they'll do is they'll clear Andrew from the side. Don't mean in a bad way. They'll clear Andrew to the side. They'll let Floris Mayer run, and uh, Andrew Kirk will be slotted in somewhere. My, my imagination tells me the end. They may have a different formula to that, but... Uh, because he wasn't... I, I've seen on occasions where they've been halfway down and stopped, and basically what they do then is run all the way down, uh, get back in the ski lift and come back up and go again, because it's the last discipline of the entire morning session and we are already up against uh, a fading light. Uh, these guys all head off their, for their, their lunch um, or dinner, depending on what time of day you, you say dinner and lunch is. Uh, but Teos Flores, Maya. 21.72, the time to be... Well, Pedersen, Maya is uh, racing his way down. He's 0.49 down. And, uh, Camp Stewart, this time around, is having to watch on for his teammates. And Floris Maya, he's putting in a good shift early doors in his absence. And here's the Langen. will be ready to go next up too. <laughs> Strong right-hander, and again, those bumps. That's exactly where we lost Kampstra there. It's clearly a, a, a Dutch team tactic to hit that line. He's not far out, you know, 0.45. Di Silvestre was 0.4 and then got a bit closer. Can he find a little speed at the bottom to put a bit of pressure on Jesper Pedersen? Is this the surprise? Oh, he's wide on the right, but he's managed to get back in. It will have cost him time. Oh, well, strangely... I think that's the first person to struggle there all day. 2.49. Amazing what one mistake can do. 
Pedersen stays to watch on as the leader. So, Neil, it looks like Andrew Coker will be going last. The of the 22-year-old Dutchman. Is that winning a bronze in the 2017 World Championship in Tavisio, Italy. His uh, best achievement thus far. They then got silver, in fact, in the giant slalom in Kranskagora. So can he go one better? And that's a good time. Third place for Niels de Langen. 1.13 behind Jesper Pedersen. You've said a few times, Alan, that the men's sitting and the women's sitting, is it's the most competitive of all the classes. And we're seeing that right now. It is currently. I, I feel it is currently. I, I think there are, it's so wide open at times because of the, the, the pitfalls and perils that come with being a sit skier. Uh, it really does open itself up to got to be in it to win it almost kind of mentality. And out goes Kristen. Well, I say in it to win it. That's out. So Pascal Kristen. A couple of uh, hairy moments in these World Championships so far. And he has another here as he tries to get himself reset. Make his way down to the bottom. So uh, Get it out, Ravi! this is uh, Ravi Drugan. Oh, that's an early slide for him as well. Well, we are claiming victims quite quickly here in the men's sitting. So regardless of the fact that this first session is going to overrun for obvious reasons. The second will have a lot less athletes in it when it eventually does start. So uh, there you go. Next out should be Enrique Plante of Argentina. Well, that's, uh, that's Andrew Kirker. On the left, what are they going to do here? Is he going to go down and up? Or is he going to go down to a certain part? This will be interesting. So they're just holding on for a second. Andrew Kirker has been told to go down. But I'm wondering if he's going down towards a, a mono ski, perhaps, and getting some assistance. I'm not sure. The quickest option, it seems, is to send him down to the bottom, ski lift him back up, but I thought he'd made his way back up. No, I think he was just getting to a safe part of the course. He was too far down to go to go so far up. I'm just wondering how far down he's going here. Interesting. Yeah, there you go. There's a there's a gap in the fence, which I think takes him to the side. There's a halfway house for the lift. So I wonder if they've figured that out here. He's gone halfway down here. He's gonna nip across to the to the halfway house for the ski lift. Uh, and make his way up, perhaps. Uh, that's uh, Pascal Christen still having some difficulties getting down, whether it be on the course or on the side. But yeah, so Andrew Kirkat, that's the story at the moment. He is able to run again, is my understanding. Uh, and we may well have a delay if he doesn't make it up sharpish. So uh, we'll keep our eyes on that one for you. Uh, in the gates, there is the Argentinian. Enrique Plante. I was wearing a, uh, a Boca Juniors shirt yesterday, and a few of the Argentinians in the Nordic event were, uh, were rather happy with that. Plante heads off on his first run of the day. Pascal Christen has made his way down safely on the sides. Plante outside the first time. Let's see how far he is, 3.17. Yeah, 39 years old. He lives in Copper Mountain, Colorado, in America. His uh, most memorable sporting achievement, so he says he's finishing second at a European Cup event. 
and winning his first international medal in a competition in France. This is a man that follows his instincts. At the moment, he's following a pretty good line through that testy right-hander. So it's been a, a good few minutes since we had somebody finish the course. But it looks like Plante is going to do just that. Dream is... No, he's gone down, but he stayed inside. Wow! That is really causing troubles. But it's amazing how many of our competitors do manage to sort of somehow find their way through the following gate. There's a little subdued celebration there from Plant as he came through the finish line. And bib number 100 is Victor Perel of France. Uh, going to be 30 years old in just five days' time is Victor. Been skiing since the age of three. Yet to win a major medal in uh, competition. Unlike many of our para-athletes here, the big dream is a Paralympic game, slightly wide on the left-hander. But not a bad time tier for Perel, just 3.62 through the uh, second timing gun. And a fairly composed right-hander, not taking too much speed there. And he's going to finish the course. And he's going to be in the top five, Victor Perel, 5.27. And his arms are in the air. He's absolutely delighted with that. Just seven finishes so far in the competition. And four left still to come. In fact, three next up should be Aaron Ewan. Yeah, don't, uh, don't forget Kirka making his way up. So he were right. Four was the was the right number. And that's depending on whether Sikorsky and Brazdegan are going to start. We saw a couple of dropouts in a few of the categories earlier on, late on on the list. Again, could be due to the conditions, could be due to their impairment. Aaron Ewan from New Zealand. Good mixture of nations taking part in this. And there you see the torchbearer carved into the mountain opposite from the 94 games. Only the second time the Paralympics used exactly the same venue as the Olympics. In winter. That is, 2.05 seconds from Ewan. He's uh, making his way down fairly steadily. 25-year-old. Oh, that's the turn. Keeps it in, my goodness. I'm going to have to stop saying people are doing all right. Every time I do it... You do need to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's still going. He is still going. So he's doing all right. 4.51 seconds at the second intermediate. And that's a good time, too. It's not bad. That's top five. See where he goes. And as we say, if you can be in the top five, top six, or even just get across the line in this early stage, you're, uh, you're in contention at the moment. He's a little wide there, but that's fine. He tucks himself in. He's going to be about six seconds back here. 5.50. It's a top six time. Aaron Ewan, he's still in the competition, and that is the biggest thing of all, because the reigning Paralympic and world champion went out just there, that very spot. It's remarkable, isn't it? <laughs> the skill. And it uh, should be third from last, Igor Sikorski, 21-year-old from Krakow in Poland. Very experienced is uh, Igor Sikorsky's uh, good guy as well. Before his accident was actually an avid snowboarder before he went to the uh, monoski. He's got a couple of bronze medals to his name. And, uh, Flaviso and Kranskagora, one apiece there. 
both in the, oh sorry, one in the giant slalom and one in the slalom. Just 0.63 backs with the first intermediates. So in 2007, he was uh, climbing a tree with a friend when one of the branches broke. And he fell from eight meters onto his back, resulting in paraplegia. He was named 2018 Para Athlete of the Year in Poland. Here's this left-hander. He's really slowed down there, hasn't he? And he's taken it very safely. 3.46. Still fairly decent, but yeah, he's lost an awful amount of time. And yeah, it was through caution, and that's again a big wide side swipe. Is there a time when you can get over cautious? And if you slow yourself down, you lose your balance. Not that he's done that. Of course, I mean, the mental approach to any sport is a big factor. If you take enough bumps and spills, sometimes you choose to be perhaps over cautious. He, uh, he may be, but that's the case. I think here it's just. He hits one of those innocuous bumps that you just cannot see, and it sends him wide. And rather than going down, he's taken the the safety first approach. Andrew Kirk, he's all smiles. He's been there, seen it, done it. He's uh, very much an experienced competitor, and he's one of those that is almost always smiling. Of course, every athlete has a an up and down moment, and uh, well, as the Gant was there. They're going to let Kirka go before him by the looks of this. So I think it was simply a case of as soon as he can get back to the gate, he can go again. It's uh, it's an opportunity for him then with Kampschler out. The time to beat is 1.10.12, as close as anyone is uh, Di Silvestro on 1.10.55. So less than half a second in it for the top two. And then Kirka will go through his process of uh, whistling. There you go. He, uh, he whistles and sings to himself in the gate. We, uh, we've had this chat. I asked him who he uh, who was singing or, or what artist, and he was just sort of like, I don't want to tell you. So I think he was slightly embarrassed by it, but um, he's, a, he's a DJ, does a lot of DJing back home as well. Recently got married, and if you follow his uh, social media accounts, his Instagram account more specifically, you'll have seen that he bashed his head and cut it wide open about th four days before competition. And it's a testament to him. He was just like, ah, it's nothing. I mean, it was a flap of skin, you know, and he, there he is, <laughs> and there he is going, oh, it's nothing, it's fine, I'm, I'm okay. So yeah, that's um, you've got to be tough, you've got to be brave, and uh, Andrew Kirker certainly ticks all of those boxes. And here he comes on his run, then his first run of what we hope is two. The uh, 30 towards the end of the month. He's uh, he's no longer the spring chicken within the event, but. Sit skiers don't tend to be overly young. I know Pedersen and Kampschler are the uh, the opposite mould, but certainly this is all about you as your condition, the strength you have in your upper body. And Andrew Kirker is a, is a big old unit, so too is Pedersen and Kampschler. He's held on here. He's wobbled his way through that section as opposed to glided. But I don't think he'll mind. In it to win it, I think he's going to be the attitude at the moment. He's just outside. This is good. Andrew Kirker does have this in his locker. He really does. He is a Paralympic champion. He's a pre previous world champion as well. And Andrew Kirker has turned the screw. Maybe this second attempt at a run is just what he needed. Right towards the end here. He's the penultimate athlete out the gate. And Andrew Kirker is chasing down on Jesper Pedersen here. Can somebody else ruin the party? He's ahead. Andrew Kirker goes into this afternoon ahead. There are just seven one hundredths of a second between two of the best in the world. You can take Kampschler out of the equation now. These two are just as good. This is just brilliant. It was really disappointing when Kampschler left the competition very early on, but it's just been electrified once again. What a run from Kirk. You could see the speed very, very early on. He took that right hand absolutely perfectly. Like it's a little bit bumpy, but better than almost anybody else we've seen. And he's gone seven hundredths of a second. And then immediately, we mentioned earlier, the sort of respect between these athletes. Pedersen, the very first man to clap his hands when Kirk across the finish line. Hey! And the last man will be Lou Brasdegand, 26 years old. 
Before his illness, he uh, took part in able-bodied skiing competitions and free riding. He's a keen mountain biker as well. Resides in Tignes, France. Also likes uh, cooking, DIY projects and skiing. What a, what a mix of hobbies. He's 1.32 down for the first time up. His motto is nothing is impossible. You just need to believe in yourself. He's doing that halfway down this, fingers crossed, first of two runs, 4.79. 4.79 is still good enough to be in sixth position. Can he find anything in the lower part of this course? Here's the two of the tricky right-handers, navigated very safely. But, uh, not carrying as much speed as we saw, of course, with Andrew Kirk, who seemed to absolutely fly down the course. 7.74, good enough for a top 10 position. So just 11 finishers in the men sitting. And no lack of entertainment, just sets up the second run, the slalom later on this afternoon. Absolutely perfectly, 700 separating Kirke and Pedersen. Absolutely cannot wait. And let's not forget running De Silvestro. Half a second between your top three, yes please. Yeah, certainly sets us up nicely, doesn't it, for the rest of this competition, or at least the competition we have today being the Super Combined. Andrew Kirkert with a fantastic run. Downhill gold in both the World Champs in 2017 and Pyeongchang. The Super Combined not always his bag. Actually, if I recall, I don't think he has a Super Combined medal anywhere in his history. So that is a good run. It sets him up and a, just a little fist bump between the two of them. <laughs> and a photo op as well. So uh, Kirker and Pedersen chatting through. That's the action for the first part of the competition. We'll be back with the Super Combine. We've done the Super G. Who will win overall when it comes to the second run? From Ewan Dunlop and myself, Alan March. We'll see you later.
As he has picked up time, one tenth of a second behind now for the youngster from RPC. Back to back winner so far, and it looks good also today for Annalena Foschke. 
Thank you. 